Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kid Lee. Well, there isn't too much going on in Star Wars land this week, so there's not enough to do a tour report. So instead, let's just do some good old Q&A. You've got questions, I've got answers. Well, at least I hope I've got answers. So let's kick this off with number one. So the first question comes in from Gabriel. They ask, what do I think of the highlights of abilities on the quick bars and the changes to abilities, such as for Death from Above on how you're able to fire it at zero range now? Well, in case you don't know, let me show you what, what Gabriel is talking about. So we've got some uh, training dummies here. So I'm going to start out with a uh, priming shot. And then as I go through the sequence, you'll see the certain abilities actually light up. And basically what that's telling you is that that is the best time to use such abilities. So let me go ahead and start here, and I'll, I'll show you what, uh, what we're talking about here. So starting on number four, uh, priming shot, I fire that off, and you see that tracer missile lights up. So I'll spam tracer missile, and you see that blazing bolts lights up. So I will go ahead and hit that. I will then go back to Tracer Missile and then switch over to Heat Seeker. And again, Blazing Bolts refreshes. We'll go ahead and fire that off again. Now let's change up here. Let's go Tracer Missile. Tracer Missile. And you see a series of rail shots has popped up because I now have my five stacks. Go ahead and shoot that off for optimal damage. Go back to Priming Shot. Oh, here's Blazing Bolts again lit up. Tracer is lit up. We'll hit that. Oh, back to Blazing Bolts. Back to Tracer, and we're going to throw in a Heat Seeker. Oop, back to Tracer. Tracer. Now we'll do a double shot here, Blazing Bolts, Rail Shot, as soon as the cast gets done. But that's basically what what uh, Gabriel is talking about. And then part two on that is being able to fire certain abilities from the zero range. For uh, Death from Above here, you used to have to like either drag it out, or click on an enemy and double tap your death from above button to fire it off. And when you tried to do it basically underneath you, it wouldn't let you. But now, I click it, and I'm now able to fire directly under me. So you get that big pack of mobs running up to you, you just target below you, and, and there you go. But what do I think about this, I guess is the real question, and... I think it's great. The the light up abilities, it, it's a very useful tool, especially for people who are learning the game. They have the ability to, you know, without having to do a ton of research, maybe learn a more optimal, optimal rotation, and it's going to make them a better DPS overall. But yeah, I like it. As you can see, I have it turned on. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool, and then, yeah, definitely being able to use, like, Death from Above, you know, directly under you, that's just absolutely fantastic. So, so there we go on that. Question number two comes in from Chaos Zero. They ask, is the Purple 41 thingy account-wide or character legacy-wide? I mean, when I get a pack of crystals on each of my characters or only uh, one per legacy. So if you're unfamiliar with what he's what he's talking about, basically as part of the Choose Your Own Path promotion, uh, they're going to be giving away an exclusive set of advanced black purple color crystals to thank everyone who is a subscriber by March 31st, uh, 2015. And basically you're gonna be getting a plus 41 crit, a 41 endurance, a 41 power and a 41 expertise. Now, officially, they have not announced what they are going to be giving. You know, is it just going to go to, like he said, is it going to be going to your legacy? Is it going to be going to each character? How are they going to do it? They have not announced that yet. So, the only thing I can do is give an educated guess based on the information that I have. And based on what they've done before, I do indeed believe that each character you have will be getting a piece of mail with a box that will contain all four crystals and then you can you know put one you know depending on what you're doing you know one in your main hand one in your off hand or give them to your companions or whatever 
I would imagine that they are going to be bound to character or bound to legacy, just so people are not filling up the GTN with these crystals. Because these crystals are already in-game, the ones that allow, is it a level 10? I believe it's a level 10 to use a 41, and if you're leveling a new character, it's definitely the way to go. But those crystals can be a little bit pricey, so this is definitely going to crash that market. So if you're looking to sell one of these 41 crystals, that's, you know, the, the 10 to 60 or, or whatever the exact stat says, you might want to look at offloading those now before this happens, because, yeah, pretty sure it's going to crash the market. So, so be prepared for that. The third question comes in from I don't know seven. They ask, "How do I unlock my advanced class? I am level twelve now, a Jedi Knight, but can't seem to work out how to actually get or unlock the advanced class." So I will show you basically the area you have to go to, and I will show this on both the Imperial side and the Republic side. So let's pretend I am level 10, level 12, whatever. And I just made it to the fleet, and I am walking off of the elevator. You're gonna, gonna basically come to this spot right here, and you've got this main hallway here. And on the left and right sides are actually the trainers you're looking for. So these two guys over here, are the ones you'll want to talk to if you're a Sith. And then these two guys over here, uh, here's the bounty hunter guy, and here is the Imperial agent guy. And I should probably note here real quick, just in case you did get lost on the fleet, let's take a look at the map. I am, again, this is the Imperial fleet. I am on the, the right side of the fleet, and this elevator here is the Corban and Hutta Departures. So the guys you are looking for are right there. Switching on over to the Republic side, uh, we'll take a look at the map first time. The So Republic fleet is basically backwards, so this time I'm all the way over on the left side, and it's the Tython and Ortman tail departures. When stepping off the elevator, again you'll come to a, a very similar position. This time over on the left side, here are the, the Jedi trainers. And over on the right side is the Trooper and Smuggler Trainers. So basically just hit up whichever one you're looking for and you will be able to choose your advanced class. What they'll do is they'll basically talk at you for a minute and they're actually going to send you to another place on the, the space dock here to actually get your advanced class. And the fourth and final question comes in from Kale. They ask, how important really is the light side, dark side system? Well, unfortunately, not very much. It's a system that a lot of people were, were hoping and were dreaming gets revamped in the future because it's really a big part of Star Wars and really it's not really a big part of this game. But I will show you a, a couple of things. So again, we're back on the fleet here. This is the, the Imperial fleet. There are a set of light side, dark side vendors. So here is the dark side vendor, for instance. Need, and he Please sells, you. you know, just a, a few basic level items. Uh, there is actually some, some housing decor in here. Uh, there is an interrogation probe. Uh, again, here's like a, a lightsaber forge, which is a housing item. Here's actually a mount. Can we take a look at it here? There we go. It's actually like a silver and blue mount. And then there is a set of uh, low-level relics. Well, I guess the, I shouldn't say low-level because there's actually a, a few in here. Here's some 19s, some 44s. And down the list, here's actually a stronghold label. So there's a, a few little items that you, you can indeed get for your light side, dark side points. Gear-wise, end game, it means nothing. But in the leveling game, there is a, a few pieces of gear that you can get, but you end up just replacing them, so it, it really doesn't matter much. Uh, we'll take just a very quick look at the, the light side vendor. And again, it's mostly just a little bit of gear, housing stuff... The lightsaber forge. Let's see if we can actually take a look at it here. I don't know if it's gonna 
Let me see it or not. There it is. There's your forge. Housing decor. A little little baby sand crawler. Look at him, isn't he cute? I was gonna make the mouse droid. Actually, that one kind of does look like a, like a mouse droid. It's like. Let's take a look at this mountain. Is this mountain any different? Oh, it's got some yellow striping on it instead. So there you go. And again, just more relics for all. Temple of Light, if you want the stronghold label. For the Emperor. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That will go ahead and do it for this Q&A session. If you have any comments or questions, or future Q&A questions for either this show or the Tor Report, please leave them below or email me at kidleyasf at gmail.com. But, yep, that will go ahead and do it for this particular episode. So with that being said, everybody keep playing and have fun.